Welcome back guys. Today we will learn how to implement the application that I showed you in the theoretical videos. Here you can see an example. So today we will take a look on how to display and implement a ground matrix, also called a graph. And in the upcoming video we'll implement the Dicer algorithm from scratch using the basic knowledge that we acquired today. As you can see, we are exploring the matrix with the gray nodes that are the explored nodes and then we backtrack with the DFS and find the optimal path. So, let's start. So, first thing, we're gonna create a new project. I'll call it Tutorial Pathfinding. In 2D, first thing inside Unity, we're gonna change the background to something like gray. Then, we're gonna create a new folder called Scripts where we insert our script and now we're going to create an empty object it's a good practice to reset the component you're going to call it ground matrix okay what do i want to do now i want to instantiate a matrix from a text so in order to create a text asset we're going to need our visual studio editor so we're going to create first of all our script that will handle the matrix creation. I will call it TXT matrix manager. So I'll double click on that. And this should open my text editor. So now we're gonna create a folder. We're gonna call it text assets. And then inside here, we're going to add a new file, matrix.txt. And uh, as I said, I want a text matrix. That means that I want to represent a matrix inside a text asset and then represent this file inside Unity with a more graphical approach. So, for instance, I will have all zeros. I can basically copy all these zeros downwards and that's a matrix what is zero zero is a free node but as we said we need walls if you want to pathfind because pathfinding inside a matrix that has no walls is pretty useless so we're going to add walls as one how do we represent this matrix inside unity well we need to do a bit of work so let's start we're going to create a plane and uh, as we can see we cannot see anything here so we need to rotate the plane actually and as you can see now, the plane is rotated by 90 degrees. We're going to scale it down one tenth of the initial plane. And that will be our cell. So then we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call it prefabs. By the way, this is a tutorial for someone that knows a bit of Unity. So if you don't know Unity, just please comment and I will do basic tutorials about Unity. Let's go ahead. We created our prefabs. Now we need to create a new material because we want to represent walls and free nodes with different materials. Let's create a new material that is like free node and a new material that we'll call, let's call it wall node. Okay, the free node will be an unlit color shader of white and a wall node will be unlit color and black node so now we're gonna apply it to the plane and that's our free node and now we are gonna create our prefabs we're gonna call it instead of plane node and we can actually remove the no the mesh collider sorry because we don't need it Let's create our prefab. Nice. We can even delete it. We don't need it in the scene right now. So now we're going to apply the script txt matrix manager to our ground matrix component. Now we need to implement our text matrix. How do we do that? Well, actually, before doing that, we need to do a bit of pre-processing, if we can say so. So what is our basic data structure that we need? Actually, this is the node data structure. So inside script, we create new folder called data structures. We're gonna create a new data structure. 
node, so a C sharp script that will represent our node. So why do we want a node? Because we do want to represent each cell as nodes, because we want to travel these nodes. So actually, we're going to go there and we're going to create an empty class that we're going to initialize maybe in the next video, maybe in this video. OK, so now we have everything set it up and now we can start to write our script. So first thing first. So we're going to create a serialized field called cell. So we want to store here our prefab because we need to know how our cell should be done. OK, then we're going to create serialized field to set the material of this cell. As we said, a cell that is represented with white is a free node. A cell represented with black is a blocked node. So it's free cell. And now we can copy paste and a wall cell. Okay, these are our white material, black material. Okay, then I want to have a list of our nodes. Actually, let's do a list of a list of our nodes because we want to represent as a 2D matrix our node matrix. Each row is a list of node and we want to represent this matrix as a 2D array. That's why we are using a 2D list. And then we create our start function. So what do we need to know before starting the program? Well, actually we need to instantiate the list to avoid any errors. Okay, and then we create a new method that we'll call instantiate matrix and we're going to create a method that we'll call instantiate matrix. First of all, we need the path of the text that we want to read from where we do need to create the matrix. Actually, we're going to specify a path like that. So we go to assets. That's our root folder slash text assets slash matrix dot txt. So that's our basic path. So where is the file there? OK, boom, done. Now we need to set up a stream reader. Why stream reader? Because we want to read this matrix value per value. And that is done by stream reader object. So we're going to do stream reader. And as you can see, the stream reader is not present here. We need to do that using system.io. That stands for input output, if you didn't know. So we're going to create our stream reader. Actually, I'm specifying stream reader because a stream could be reader, writer, or whatever, or both, actually. So new stream reader. And we need to specify there, as you can see by doing that, that we need a stream or a path. So we're going to specify our path. That's the path where the matrix is. Actually, be careful. If you didn't set up the project as mine, you may have a different path and you need to pay attention over that. If you want to make a scalable application, you then do want to change this approach to something more advanced, like you want to have a serialized field where you have a private text asset and then you have other things and you can set up a more advanced application like that, as I did in my main application. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to show you this way. So with a stream reader, what we can do is reading line per line of the file. So we're going to create a new var line where we do have a stream reader dot read line. So basically what we are doing is reading line per line. So 
the first pass will be this line, then this line, that's it, then this line, then this line, then this line, then this line. Until the end, we'll, we'll read anything, so we'll have like null, and we can end our reading process. So to read the length of each line, we need to create a new variable length, that is line dot length, and this will be used for reading char by char. So now we're going to create a new thing that is int x equals zero and y equals zero. That's because we need to have coordinates of where we are. So this is basically zero, 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 one, zero, two, zero, three, and so on. And then you have uh, one, zero, sorry, it's actually one, zero, one, one, and so on. Now we create a cycle where we iterate through the lines. So for example, we're gonna while until the line is not null. So until we have reached the end, we're gonna create a new list of node that we are gonna create row. We are reading a row actually. So we are creating a new list of nodes. You will see why we're creating this now. And then we're gonna see. So for each char c in line, I'm assuming that you know what a for each is. Basically, it's a compressed form of the for where we read every single character of the line. Now we're creating a new variable called new cell var of a game object instantiate a new cell. We are creating with this, we are creating a new cell. So a new node a new graphical node and var just simply take these and it says that this is a game object return and we create a new game object so this is this stores our new game object our new cell and we're gonna see new cell dot transform dot parent this dot transform because we want this to be a child of the ground matrix object new cell dot transform dot position we're going to set our position as a new vector 3 so the position inside here is expressed in coordinates in with a vector 3 that says x y and z in the word we create a new vector 3 that says you need to be at x position y position and zero position because we want the Z to be always zero in a 2D application. Like, be sure that this is zero, otherwise you can witness some problems. Now we're gonna make an if to check if we met a one, we're gonna say new cell dot get component mesh render. Uh, the mesh render is basically the thing that is rendered on the screen that contains the material. So we're gonna say, Mesh renderer dot material equals wall cell. I call it yes, wall cell because we want if the C is one, we want a wall cell, and then we're gonna say row dot add new node, and we we're gonna look on how to create a node afterwards. But for now, we're gonna add this else. We've met a zero because we have only one and zero. So if it's not one, then it's zero. We're gonna say new cell brackets material free cell and then we're gonna row dot add a new node we're gonna complete the node afterwards don't worry so now that we did that we are going to increment the x counter because we are walking through x right now so this is our x so for each of these value we need to increment the x because we want to we are using the x inside this position so uh, we basically want to increment the x position every single time that we move ahead to move the position inside the word okay we are going to say nodes that is our data structure here we're going to add our row so we're going to add row per row inside our nodes okay in this way we're going to have the nodes data structure filled with all the rows of the matrix .txt. Now that we have that, we're gonna say line equals stream reader dot 
read line and we are gonna read the next line what what I'm doing here is basically reading this line and then this comment will read the next line until the line will become null and eventually leaving the while construct then we are incrementing the y axis just as we did with x we are moving now on the y axis so basically this is the x axis and this is the y axis actually don't forget to set the x to be zero because we want to restart the x every single time because as we are reading a new line then we are starting from there and doing all the thing again all the reading process again so now basically this is the instantiate matrix we're gonna go to unity again we're waiting to update the editor okay and we need we do need to add a couple of things this for example is our node because the cell is basically our node and a free material will be the free node the block material will be the wall node now we're testing what we'll end with. Okay, and as you can see, we have our text matrix represented inside our words by all these nodes. Okay, um, actually this is not scaled to fit into the camera perfectly. If you want to make an application, you should scale it to properly stay inside the camera every single time. But for the sake of simplicity, you can do another thing to make the matrix smaller to see the matrix in a better way is to increase the size of the camera so if we for example pa pass to 8 and maybe we're moving the camera a bit to the right so 16 6.16 .16, we're copying this value so we're gonna go to 8 and 6.16 we're gonna press play and as you can see we can see the matrix now so that's all for today in the next video we will have a look on how we do implement uh, the node that we have in here so this is our node and then we will start to implement our Dystra algorithm from scratch for now it's enough I hope you enjoy the video and see you next time